So our scripture reading this morning is from the gospel writer John, and we read in the first chapter, beginning with verse 29 through 45, as we hear um, of the beginning of Jesus' ministry um, and how that ministry was passed on to him. Hear God's word for us this morning. The next day, John the baptizer saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me. The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went, and they saw where Jesus was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was the one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at Simon Peter and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which translated is Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the laws and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. This is God's holy word for us this morning. This morning, we encounter Jesus in the wilderness near the banks of the Jordan River, where he has been baptized earlier by his cousin John, son of Elizabeth and Zechariah. The importance of this encounter is the revealing of Jesus' true identity and the official beginning of Jesus' ministry. John the baptizer bears witness to Jesus as the one whom the Spirit descended. Jesus is also revealed as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Three reminders in the first part of the scripture reading. Water, Spirit as the source of new life, and the Lamb. We are reminded of the cleansing and renewing power of the waters of baptism. The Spirit is recognized as the source of new life, a new beginning, freshness. The Lamb is a symbol of the innocence and faith. This encounter is perhaps near the time of the Passover, the celebration of God's deliverance, and the sacrifice of the Paschal Lamb. Jesus, 
for the first time in the Gospels, becomes a representation of that sacrificial lamb. John the baptizer, as the son of a priest, would also have known well the command of the Lord to offer a lamb upon the altar every morning and evening. This shall be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations at the door of the tabernacle of meeting before the Lord, where I will meet you to speak with you. John knew that there could be no forgiveness without sacrifice. The imagery of the lamb as a sacrifice offered for the sin of God's people, our substitute on the cross, is one we will continue to encounter in the weeks ahead as we enter the season of Lent. Jesus is the lamb that God provides and is this sacrifice. Christ takes away the sin of the world. A mystery revealed. In the act of baptism, John came to see and know who Jesus really was, the Word in flesh. John the baptizer's calling was to repentance and baptism as a preparation for Jesus' coming. As we enter this part of the story following the baptism of Jesus in the waters of the Jordan, Christ's true identity is revealed, and John is announcing it to all who will listen. There are two parts of this story of God's calling and Jesus seeking disciples to follow him. Part one is what happens in the wilderness near Bethany and the Jordan River. This episode includes John the baptizer as he passes his followers, at least some of them, on to Jesus. John's call to repentance is the start of discipleship. John has not only prepared the way for Jesus and his ministry, but he has prepared some of his followers to become not his disciples, but Jesus. John now passes the ministry on to Jesus and lets go of his own followers and passes them on to God's chosen one. In part two, Andrew and another unnamed disciple approach Jesus and receive the invitation to come and see. They were seekers followers of John the baptizer, and now they were seeking the Lamb of God that John had pointed them to. Jesus notices the two men following him. In the first recorded words in the Gospels of Jesus speaking, he says, What do you seek? An interesting question. What do you seek? Are you seeking security? A new cause? A new way of living life? Perhaps Jesus was really asking, what do you seek? Do you really have any idea of what seeking me out means? Do you really know what I'm about? What my call is as the Messiah, Son of God? Do you have any idea of the cost of leaving John to follow me? A fine question for anyone who chooses to follow Jesus, including each of us. Do you know what it means to follow me? The two disciples of John the baptizer, now following Jesus, come back with their own question, addressing him as rabbi, meaning great one or teacher. Rabbi, where are you staying? This is so much more than a location, a home, or a town. They are asking, 
Where is your dwelling place? Where do you come from? What's your story? What's your purpose? They are seeking. Where are you staying? Can we come to know you? Jesus meets them where they are as seekers and issues an invitation. Come and see. Come and ask your questions. Let me help you seek out who I am. Come and see what it means, really means, to be my follower. Come and see. Seek your answers as you follow me. Come with me and see what following me is all about. The answer was apparently appealing and inviting, for the two disciples came and remained until the tenth hour, four o'clock in the afternoon. A detail that says to us, no one will become an authentic follower, a disciple, without seeking and remaining. Come and see. Sit. Stay a while. Ponder and ask your questions. See and begin to understand. At least one of those two seekers, if not both of them, became a follower, answered the call to come and see, and became part of the twelve disciples of Christ. Andrew accepts Jesus' invitation and comes and begins to see what it means to be a follower and disciple of Christ. Andrew then set out and passed on the invitation to his brother Simon Peter. We have found the Messiah as he brings Simon Peter to Jesus. Within the heart of this story is also the invitation to the gospel writer John seeking out Jesus too, as well as reaching out to his brother, James. Andrew, his brother Simon Peter, John, who might have been the other disciple with Andrew originally, and his brother, James. Seekers all. Followers who heard the invitation, come and see, and accepted. Jesus now has at least four disciples following him, some if not all of whom had been followers of John the baptizer. Andrew has some wonderful gifts as a seeker and follower. He extends Jesus' invitation to his brother, now called Peter. It doesn't appear that Andrew ever seemed to resent taking a backseat or second place to his brother. Even when Peter is included in the intimate circle of three, so close to Jesus, nor when he becomes the leader of the twelve. Nothing in the records of the Gospels reflects any jealousy. Andrew also has the wonderful gift of being an introducer. He introduces his brother to Jesus. He brings the boy with the loaves and fishes to Jesus. And when later on, when Philip does not seem to know what to do with the Greeks who come seeking Jesus, he brings them to Andrew, who then takes them to Jesus. It was no small thing to bring non-Jews to meet Jesus in those last hours so close to the cross, when Jesus' first mission was to the people of Israel. Out of that first meeting with Jesus, Andrew does what is very difficult for many of us to do. He hurries off to find his brother to share the news with someone else. Where was Simon Peter? At home? Fishing? 
Can you picture Andrew finding his brother, Simon Peter, in a fish market, maybe, and blurting out, we have found the Messiah, we have found the Christ. A seeker, a follower of John the Baptizer, and now Andrew is inviting his brother and sharing the good news of what he has found. We have found the Christ, the anointed one, who will fulfill all the longings of Israel. God in the flesh. Then Andrew brings his brother to Jesus. Isn't that at the heart of serving as a disciple? The willingness to bring others to Jesus, to share what you were seeking and now have found? Jesus looked at Simon Peter, searchingly and with a penetrating gaze, and saw what no one else could see. Jesus not only saw what Peter could become, but who he would become. This big, blustering, erratic fisherman would become a leader among men, the first among the apostles, and finally a martyr because of his love for Jesus. Jesus claims him with a new name, Cephas, which signifies what he will become, a rock. In designating him by his new name, Jesus takes possession of him, and consecrates him for the work which will, he will be entrusted with as a follower, a disciple of Jesus the Christ. Jesus has found four followers to come and see. All disciples, learners, or students of John the Baptizer. Jesus seeks them out, invites them to come, and they see that this ministry of Jesus Christ is something to become a part of. The next day, Jesus seeks out Philip, who came from the same town as Andrew and Peter, Bethsaida, a small town on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee. Whether they knew one another or not, they came from the same region originally, and were all fishermen by trade. Although Andrew and Peter had left the Seda to fish the waters near the larger town of Capernaum on the north tip of the lake, it is there that Jesus will make his home base for ministry for several months. Philip must have been near the Jordan in the wilderness as well, probably a follower of John the Baptizer, too. Jesus is ready to leave the wilderness behind and go to Galilee. But before he leaves, he seeks Philip out and says, Follow me. In this instance, Jesus finds Philip and invites him to join the other disciples from the day before. Peter Andrew, John, and James had more or less found Jesus. They had been directed to the Lamb by John the Baptizer. This invitation to Philip is Jesus himself seeking and finding one of the disciples. That doesn't mean that Jesus didn't seek and call all of the twelve. It is just a reminder that the first few were followers of John the Baptizer, who were then shared with Jesus. After all, John's Gospel also reminds us that Jesus said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. The language is unique in Philip's call as well. He is the first one whom Jesus physically seeks out and the first one to whom Jesus actually said, follow me. 
It is obvious that Philip already had a seeking heart in the way that he responded to Jesus. Philip found Nathanael, often called Bartholomew, and said to him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Philip and Nathanael, like the first four disciples, had been studying the law and the prophets and were seeking the Messiah. That is what had drawn them all to the wilderness to hear John the baptizer in the first place. When Jesus invites Philip to follow, his ears, eyes, and heart were already open, and he was prepared to follow. It almost seems as if Philip was waiting for this invitation. He accepted on the spot and immediately found Nathaniel who trusted Philip's witness. While Nathaniel has questions as to where Jesus comes from, he's not doubting the fact that Jesus is indeed the Son of God. Jesus then names Nathaniel as the first one to believe in him when he asks, Do you believe? Jesus also tells Nathanael that he will be given far deeper grounds for belief than Jesus' perception of who he is. Philip responds and follows, and like Andrew, shares the invitation with another. Nathanael believes and follows as well. As Jesus' ministry unfolds, Nathanael and others will see mighty works, great and wondrous surprises, revealing the glory of God. Jesus is seeking, calling disciples to be in ministry alongside him. He is not picking saints, well-trained Jewish leaders, versed prophets, or people of high standing in the community. Jesus is seeking followers, some who have already chosen to follow John the Baptizer, these men who were common laborers as fishermen, ordinary people who would be called to extraordinary things. Come and see. Follow me. Seek and you shall find. Here in John's Gospel, we hear the seeking out of Andrew, probably John himself, James, Peter, Philip, and Nathaniel, as they encounter Jesus for the first time. This was phase one of their calling. This was the conversion. This was the moment when they came and saw. They recognized Jesus as the Lamb of God and Lord of all and embraced Jesus by faith. All of this unfolding near the beginning of Jesus' ministry in the wilderness near the Jordan River. Soon, they will be on the Sea of Galilee, fishing and mending their nets before phase two. Stepping into the full-time ministry of following Jesus. In just these invitations of Jesus seeking the first disciples out of the twelve, we have been given a vast and varied understanding of who Jesus is. The Lamb of God, Rabbi, Teacher, Messiah, the one whom Moses in the Law and the Prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, son of God, King of Israel. May we too hear the invitation.
come and see. Follow me. May it always be so. Amen.